Pelvis and Acetabular Anatomy. This is from the OTA Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series version 5, and slides are by Dr. Alicia Scott, and I am Saga Brahman narrating. We already discussed the uh, pelvis, osteology, uh, we discussed muscular, ligamentous, uh, and um, neurovascular anatomy, and now we're going to shift a little bit to acetabular anatomy. So we're still in the pelvis, right? But uh, we're going to focus a little bit more just on the acetabulum because acetabulum fractures um, generally treated as somewhat separate topic, and uh, the anatomy can be a little bit confusing, especially uh, when you start talking about articular injuries and the need for reduction. And it's very important to have a good understanding. And there's some schemes here um, that are important to understand, namely um, this column concept. So. Again, it's great if you just get a bone model in your hands, but if you take that model and you sort of pick it up and turn it oriented this way, so uh, you have the uh, outer table kind of facing you and you have the pelvis tilted forward such that uh, you have that acetabular you know, horseshoe here pointing down, right? So once you do that, this is anterior column and this is posterior column. Okay, so it's really important to first orient the pelvis this way. And this, this is also if you were to flip the pelvis the other way. It's just a little easier to see your orientation when you orient this way. But hold it this way, and then you sort of have this, um, you know, inverted Y, right? That's your inverted Y sort of um, uh, orientation. So that's your anterior column, and that's your posterior column, right? And then, you know, the actual, you know, the... The cup of the acetabulum does have an anterior wall and posterior wall, which are part of those columns, right? So you have this inverted Y concept that was originally described uh, by Jude and Letournel, and uh, some these are some of the original some of the drawings from their original textbooks. The columns are connected to the SI joint by a thick area of bone above the sciatic notch that we call the sciatic buttress. Okay, and if you can look at a bone model, you see what we're talking about. Um, the anatomic roof of the acetabulum forms the keystone uh, of this arch. The roof is also called the source seal. So you have the anterior and posterior columns. You have the anterior and posterior walls we talked about. You also have um, this quadrilateral surface or medial wall. We mentioned this briefly in the first video. Um, and we were saying that's where the obturator internus muscle uh, resides. Uh, but uh, that's sort of your like medial um part of the acetabulum. So occasionally if you have a fracture uh, with protrusio, that uh, quadrilateral surface may be disrupted. And then you have the dome. So a little bit more about the anterior column. This extends from the anterior iliac crest, right, all the way down to the pubic symphysis. You have an iliac segment, an acetabular segment, and then medially the pubic segment. The posterior column does not extend all the way up into the ilium, right? This just is that sort of supraacetabular bone extending from the greater sciatic notch down to the inferior ischium, as shown here on multiple views. Uh, the anterior wall is shown here, includes the iliopectineal eminence. The posterior wall is, as you would expect, that area there. This is a very common type of acetabulum fracture. Quadrilateral surface, as shown here, is commonly involved in geriatric acetabular patterns. I mentioned earlier that sometimes you'll get a protrusio pattern where the head displaces medially into the pelvis. Well, how does it get there? Well, typically a fracture of the quadrilateral surface. And then, of course, when you treat these, it oftentimes requires some type of direct fixation or buttressing of that quadrilateral surface. So it's an important uh, area to understand. Let's talk about ligaments in the acetabulum. Well, acetabulum forms part of the hip joint. So you have the capsule, uh, the labrum, the ligamentum teres, the transverse acetabular ligament. Neurovascular anatomy, it's really important to understand where the sciatic nerve runs, understand the normal anatomy, recognize there is variant anatomy. Um, so typically the sciatic nerve runs um, uh, sort of deep to the uh, piriformis and then exits and comes posterior to the gemelli and obturator internus, but occasionally you get these variant patterns. When you're doing acetabular work, 
uh, posteriorly, it's very important to find, recognize the sciatic nerve, relieve tension on the sciatic nerve. If you think about how to do that, that's generally with knee flexion, hip extension, the opposite of a straight leg raise test that we do to basically put tension on the nerve and identify um, symptoms. So just think of it that way. Let's talk about the vascular anatomy. So you have the superior gluteal artery, the inferior gluteal artery, um, and then um, medially you have the iliolumbar and the obturator artery. So when you're working posteriorly, you have to be cautious. Um, you see this all comes out from the greater sciatic notch. So you do have to be careful working through the greater sciatic notch to recognize that um, you know you could potentially run into bleeding here. And the problem is, if you run into bleeding right at the greater sciatic notch, occasionally the bleeding vessel can retract into the pelvis through the notch and become very, very difficult to, uh, to, 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 to get to. So you have to be extremely cautious there. When working through an anterior intrapelvic approach, um, you have numerous things to watch for. You have the uh, external iliac, right, which is kind of coursing right above you here. Uh, you have the obturator artery, which is coursing right through your field. You need to recognize it and protect it. And of course, as you get really posterior, you'll get to the internal iliac and the greater sciatic notch as well. The iliolumbar artery comes from the posterior trunk of the internal iliac or from the obturator and is kind of outlined here. Uh, this is a nutrient artery of the ilium. The obturator artery is highlighted very nicely here. It has branches to the quadrilateral surface, but it kind of exits through the obturator foramen. Superior gluteal artery is something we see injured very frequently with pelvic ring injuries. Uh, it's an important contributor to the acetabular blood supply as shown here, and it has multiple branches. So um, as I mentioned earlier, this can be injured sometimes from fractures or occasionally from uh, errant retractor placement or instrumentation working in the area of the greater sciatic notch. The inferior gluteal artery um, is deep to the short external rotators, uh, and you can see that also is exiting through the greater sciatic notch. So the medial uh, femoral circumflex artery is um, very important. Its ascending branch is the main blood supply to the femoral head. So when you have traumatic injuries to the hip joint dislocations, when you are dissecting the posterior hip, for instance, if you decide to go down, go in and take down the quadratus off of the femur, you can damage this. So typically when we do a posterior approach, um, Coker Langenbeck for a fracture case, um, we typically will dissect the piriformis and obturator internus tendons off of the femur. Uh, and try to leave at least about a centimeter tag, as opposed to many times if we're doing a arthroplasty, you may just take um, the piriformis and obturator internus and capsule all just right off of bone. So you, you can't do that here, especially can't go all the way down into the quadratus either because you will disrupt the blood supply to the um, femoral head by damaging the medial femoral circumflex. So you have to kind of identify the tendons, um, uh, and then uh, leave, a ta leave, leave some tissue on the uh, femur there so you don't inadvertently get into the uh, medial femoral circumflex. So those are our objectives. Hopefully you were able to learn anatomy of the pelvis and acetabulum, differentiate palpable landmarks. These are some references. Thank you.